situation because sometimes we tend to put some things in front of him. We tend to forget about him. We tend to think our mountains are bigger than he is. So sometimes he has to put you in a position where you have to go on your knees and leave. You can't lean on mommy. You can't lean on babe.
Israelites know your business? Oh, is this, can you just turn this mic on? I said, if some Israelites know your business, then everybody else is going to know. So now he finds himself in Midian. He spends time there. And at the time, uh, uh, he, he ends up being 80 years old. And then, watch this. That's when God says, I'm going to send you down to Egypt. Okay, all right, God. Okay, okay, all right, I have a problem. Here's attention to the text. Uh, I said, when he turns 80 years old, that's when God says, I need you to go down to Egypt. Wait, what? You, you, you want me to go now? God, I'm 80 years old. I'm looking for my social security benefit. I'm ready to sign up with um, AARP. Um, can, can we be honest in the house? Has there ever been a time where you thought God had bad timing? <laughs> I mean, why, God, are you giving me this assignment right now? I mean, I'm 80 years old. When he wanted to do this deliverer thing, he was younger. He had much energy. He had more resources. Uh, but now, God, they're coming to me when I'm a little bit older. I'm not so strong. I mean, have you ever, ever experienced this where you feel like God is giving you an assignment at the wrong time? This is not a good time for me. My finances, my finances are jacked. I just lost my job. My, my family is a mess. I got kids away at school. I just lost my loved one. This is not a good time. Now, when you read the story, you, you tend to believe that, th that God tells Moses to do this now simply because he hears the cries of the people. But when you read the text, really, I mean, not even in the Greek, the Hebrew or the Arabic, you can just read the text. You realize that it wasn't because he heard the cries of the people, because they were always crying and he always heard them. But God saw something in Moses now that he didn't see then. Right. I just wanted to encourage somebody because I don't really want to, I didn't really come to preach. I just came to share something very quickly that God has placed an assignment on your life and it is contrary to what you think, it is the right time. Yes. It's the right time and I asked the question why? Why is it the right time? God said this simply, and I'll, and I'll hurry up and end this. Um, mm. God says it is the right time because he saw that Moses developed character in a private place. I want you to turn to your neighbor and help me preach this thing for the next five minutes that I am on assignment. Okay? I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Because I have been developed. Because I have been developed in a private place. In a private place. Here's what you need to know about this text. Moses was 80 years old. He stays until he's 80. But when Moses got to Midian, he was 40. Uh, 40 years is a long time to stay in one place, especially taking care of sheep. During this, scholars say that Moses became so compassionate that uh, he would often take the sheep in his arms whenever, they were, whenever danger lurked. And unlike other shepherds, he would, uh, he would make sure that they were safe. He would hold them in his arms and bring them all the way back home if they had any kind of sickness, any kind of spots, unlike other shepherds. Moses was developed. He developed such a compassion while he was in Midian. And what you need to know about Midian was that Midian was an obscure place. Midian was not the kind of place that you would take your family to go on vacation. Midian was not the place where um, people would go to sightsee. Midian was an obscure place. But the Bible says, and notice, Moses does not try to run away from Midian. But your Bible says that he stays until God meets him there. Yes. 
I want to let somebody know today that you should never despise the place that God has placed you. Because the place is attached to your assignment. Oh, that's good. That's good. Can, can, can I say that again? That your place is attached to your assignment. That God has to work on your prayer life. He has to work on your devotional life. He has to work on you while he's working on things for you. Because get this, God will never let your assignment outrun your maturity. Can I say that again? Because I'm, I'm catching it, but I'm funny, but you ain't catching it. That God will never let your assignment outrun your maturity. The problem with some of us is that we want everything right now. That we don't want to go through nothing. We don't want to face anything. We want everything to be smooth. But understand that sometimes God has to hide you so that people don't see your process. For real, that was, that was a shout and a cartwheel up. Let me try that again. That sometimes God has to hide you so that people don't see your process because they don't need to know your secret struggles. They don't need to know some of the battles. They don't need to know those addictions. So God says, let me work on you in private so that you don't bring your baggage out in public. And can I give you some theology in, ge in, 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 ge in, in geography? The land of Midian, I nearly jumped out of my seat, preachers. The land of Midian, ah, oh, this is so good. The land of Midian was actually very close to the promised land. It was just a few miles from the promised land, which means that when he thought he was far from everything and far from everybody, he was actually closest to his destination than any other time in his life. But Moses was exactly where God needed him to be. Come here, let me help you. Don't worry about where God has you right now. God needs you to stay and let him work on you because your breakthrough is right around the corner. Okay, so very quickly, uh, he says, okay, uh, sec, uh, first he said, I developed, I saw that you, you, your character was developed, but then I realized that you were more comfortable in your identity. Ah, can, I, can I share this quickly? Moses kept on vacillating, going back and forth between being an Egyptian and being an Israelite. One minute he was an Israelite, and the other minute he was an Egyptian. He was an Israelite when he murdered uh, an Egyptian who was trying to kill his Hebrew brother. But when he runs back, when he runs away and heads up to Midian, your Bible says that when Jethro's daughter reports to her dad, she says, Ah, there is a brother out there. He is an Egyptian, and he has helped us. You've got to realize that even though he was born, uh, born uh, uh, a Hebrew, that he was raised by an Egyptian. Which means that he suffered, he had an identity crisis. But when we get to this text, the verse 1, your Bible says, that Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and led the flock of the backside to the backside of the desert. Now I know why you're not shouting because this is a sound. You're just like, okay, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? So what? He is he is raising sheep. What you need to understand is this, and I'll shut up and take my seat. The fact that we see Moses in the field with sheep means that he's now identifying with his own ethnic people. For this was an assignment that no one who still thought of himself as an Egyptian would ever take on. Shepherding was looked down upon as a despicable job. So it is evident in the text that whenever he decided to return to Egypt, it would not be as an Egyptian but it would be as an Israelite. Amen. God says, you're ready for this assignment 
because you're, you finally accepted who you really are. And is there anybody who can testify that I know who I am? Because the truth of the matter is that we've allowed others to dictate our, our identities for too long. We've allowed people on social media to dictate who we are. We've allowed people in our lives to dictate who we are. But when you know who you are, I said, when you know who you are, I said, when you know who you are, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and you walk like a king. Okay, all right, let me put it where you can reach it. So I have, um, no, let me not tell that story. Prince, uh, you heard about Prince Harry the other day? Prince Harry, uh, they've resigned from all their royal responsibilities. And so, you know, the queen did, the queen's, she said, because Prince Harry said, I don't want the same thing that happened to my wife happen to my mom. I mean, happened to my mom, happened to my wife. And so he said, I'm going to let this thing go. And the queen said, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to strip you of your title. And two, you got to pay the money back. You got to pay the money back uh, that we were using to build, to renovate your house. As I thought about that thing, I remembered 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are a chosen generation. I wish I had a church. Uh, a, a, a royal priesthood. The thing is that she cannot take back what Prince Harry was born into. Can I preach like I feel it? People can take away the title, but they cannot take back what God has made you. And I just want you to be, uh, I, I can't affirm somebody, you want to be who you are despite of what others may say about you. Okay, all right, that's not good. I'm feeling that. So I just came back from uh, Jamaica. I did camp meeting. I had a wonderful time. But let me tell you a little secret, man. Uh, when I used to live in the islands, I became uh, the first el the head elder at age 17. And and they and the the, the the man who was in charge said to me, you, you're too young, you, you can't do this thing. Um, you need to, I'm gonna take the position away from you. And he took it from me and said, hey man, you 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 you, you can't do this. This ministry thing is not going to work out for you. Well, when I got back to Jamaica to do camp meeting, oh oh guess who introduced oh me? Oh okay, Y'all just missed the shot. The same person who told me that I could not do this ministry thing. Because when you trust in God and you know who you are in Him, you will not let anybody dictate what happens to you. So my final thing is this, and I promise I'm done. You, you've got to know this is your time, this is your assignment. The Lord, He's developed your character too. Uh, you know, you have, be, you're confident in your identity. And three, the Bible lets us know. The Bible lets us know. Now, this is good. He was ready for his assignment because he was open to new revelation. When Moses sees the bush, your Bible says that Moses does not walk away. Moses does not say this cannot be God. The Bible says that he communicates with the bush. As a matter of fact, he takes off his shoes because he realizes that where he is standing is holy ground. God says, I want you to go when I'm done. God says, I want you to go. And uh, Moses says, here I am. The reason some people have not accepted a new assignment is because they're still operating under old revelation. And the question that you have to ask yourself is this. What destiny are you avoiding because you stopped listening? Because the reality is that some of us are stuck on what God said rather than what God is saying. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And, uh, and my concern for the church is this. And a preacher put this, put this so, he, 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 he said this so well. My, my concern is this. That the church is moving on expired instructions. Oh, wow. Ouch. Because uh, you, you all know what inspired instructions like. So um, there was a a preacher telling me that there was he had a boy who liked big big friends, the one that the ones that come to ten, 
And uh, his boy called him and said, hey man, I found him. Big Frank's uh, two th uh, on the tennis in 2013. He said, you think I can eat it? He said, man, no, no, I don't think you should eat it. Um, because here's the revelation. It, the sodium might be good, I mean, well, to preserve it, but the thing is, it might, it's 2020. And what you, what was good for you back then may not be good for you right now. And so the word on tonight is that could it be that the reason why you're going through so much problems today is because you're moving on expired instructions. The reason why your relationship is not working out was because that relationship was supposed to be in 2019. It should have ended 2019. But this is a new year. Maybe that's why, because you're moving on expired instructions. Could it be that the reason why you don't have, uh, you're getting so much problems on the job is because God wants you to know that it's time for you to move forward. I didn't really mean to preach tonight. I'm sorry for keeping you this late. But the truth of the matter is that God wants to give you a new assignment. He wants you to keep moving forward. What is the assignment that God has placed on your heart? You know what that is. If you're willing to follow this new assignment, whatever it is, why don't you raise your hands with me? God bless you. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We're so grateful that you have never disqualified us from any assignment simply because of our records. But we thank you for being patient with us. Now, God, I pray that you would abuse, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we would go where you'd have us to go, say what you'd have us to say. Please, God, use us at the impulse of thy love so that when the saints come marching in, we will be there. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. A special offer will be collected right now before you leave. It was a pleasure to serve with you tonight. I pray that God will continue to bless you. May God's face to shine upon you and give you peace. Both now and forever.
So I, I just want us to really take the next few minutes as pastors who want to pray over us to just kind of tell God, recommit yourself to God. Tell God, listen, I didn't do my very, very best last year, but this year, I'm going to push for more. This year, I'm going to strive for more. This year, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to touch a young person in his life. I'm going to minister to somebody more. I'm going to seek those that are lost. This year, I'm going to do more. Because I know that you're coming. I know that you are real in my life. And I know it's only because of you that I'm standing here. Amen? Is that your prayer? Alright, as pastor come and as he pray over us, just keep that in your heart. Say, God, fill me. Start with me first. Fill me up first. So that I may pour out so that I may pour out on a young person's life. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's just bow our hands together. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we pause just a little longer tonight to recognize your awesomeness, your greatness, your power, your love, your mercies, your compassion towards us. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us, these young people, out of way of the world to send them back as your servants. Tonight, Lord, we crave your divine presence, your divine function upon each one. Especially, Lord, as they carry up their roles as members and executive members of the Youth Federation in this area. Lord, you know the work that you have called them to do and what you have called them to be. It is not by might nor by power, nor can they do it by themselves, but by your Holy Spirit. So consecrate them now. It is for this purpose that they have come tonight, to be set aside, to be re-energized, to be commissioned once again this year to greater service. Take away their weaknesses, their but slidings, their frailties, Lord, and give them strength for this tremendous journey, this great ministry that you have called them to pursue. Forgive them, Lord, of every wrong, every weakness. Give them strength proportionate to their weaknesses to that dear Lord. And we claim your grace in their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sanctify them, dear God. Set them as part of this great work that you have called them to be and may their lives be exemplary as they serve. Thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you for the homes, the families, the churches that they represent. Have them to be sentinels, light bearers, soldiers of the cross. And Lord, when the struggles of this life is over, when Jesus Christ comes, the work on earth is finished. May each one, Lord, receive from you a crown of life that will not fade away. And may those with whom and for whom they have labored be privileged to live and reign with you forever. Consecrate them again and seal this commitment with the gift of your Holy Spirit tonight. For we ask all these things in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.